I say we just forge ahead regardless of whether we can hear each other. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what makes a real marriage, honey. Just ah. don't even listen to each other. Just go ahead. Do your thing. All right. All right. We're going to try it again. Patience, patience. Three, two, one. You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcast on Netroots Radio or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for October 23rd, 2020. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we were this close to getting our own show on Quibi, it's The Professional Left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Drift Glass. Hey, you know, if you got a couple of billion dollars to just set on fire for no goddamn good reason... Um, and you're not the Trump campaign who just, you know, I don't know what they did with that money, but they raised a lot of it and they spent it stupidly. Spend it on us, you know, give us a show on Quibi. I'd be happy with $5 a week, a month, I mean. <laughs> uh, well, well, Quibi's all broke now, so it's too late to ask them. But I'm sure there are right. other really stupid, deep-pocketed people out there looking to just throw their money at something worthwhile. And, uh, you know, you could be cutting very large checks to the the boys at the Lincoln Project, and that's great. Um, or you could be writing checks to actual liberals who will be with you after a po- probable um, Biden victory. There you go. Uh, our letter show is next week. So you have one week to get your letters in. Writing a letter to the Professional Left podcast and wishing Drift Glass a happy birthday at the same time. Yes. Is a, a good way to uh, make yourself feel better in these trying, stressful times. Everybody's having trouble sleeping. Everybody I know is having uh, stress and anxiety attacks, and mm-hmm. we're all having a really hard time taking care of ourselves. Uh, if you can, take care of each other. Um, I'm doing postcards to voters five a day. Today, uh, I put stamps on my 115th postcard she did. since late September. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, you know, it feels good. It feels like I'm making a small difference reaching out to voters that way. So whatever you can do to take care of yourself. But I do recommend sending a letter or email to uh, us and letting us know how you're doing uh, and what you're thinking and what your voting experience is like. Anything that uh, interests you in letting us know. And uh, we'll be reading some of those next week. Um, and if you're if you're doing like I'm doing, which is driving your wife's postcards to the post office. Um, <laughs> that's his job. That's my job. Uh, <laughs> although the, this coming week, I'll be uh, back to phone banking and texting for our local congressional candidate, Betsy Dirksen Lundgren, who who is now a toss up in this district, which is great. Yeah. Illinois 13 um, toss up. Yeah. That is good news. And if you're yes. having, you know, panic dreams, if you're awake at three in the morning because you're dreaming of, of Fauci and masks and apocalypses, uh, you're not alone. That's happening to me pretty much three nights a week. So yeah, um, yeah, it's, and uh, it doesn't help that it's it's Halloween month no. and everything on TV is either Trump or a horror movie. So unless uh, unless you're watching Gunsmoke, people, that's all I can say. Well, if you're watching Gunsmoke twenty four seven like my husband is, then yeah, that's that's a different situation. Hey, uh, talk to me about last night's debate. We did not watch it live but we did sort of watch it on twitter afterwards which is probably why we didn't get much sleep last night yeah um well i think it, it, this in terms of debates you, you should know once upon a time i i was a teacher at columbia college and um uh there was a, a vice presidential debate with dick cheney and <laughs> i i made my class watch it <laughs> for extra credit i said it's your civic responsibility to be, you know, well informed about stuff. So I, I taught a sort of a history of technology class, how technology works, and you know how computers work. One hundred and one to a bunch of artists and videographers and writers. And this one night, I just carved out and said, "We're bringing a, a big television, and we're going to watch the debate." And mm. like tough shit, you'll deal with it. Um, I didn't watch last night at all. See, from my point of view, the debate was like. I don't know if you, there are some cases, rare cases, when a court will order a couple into couples counseling before they finalize the divorce. And that's what the debate felt like. Like Mm -hmm. the last mandatory marriage counseling session before the inevitable divorce. Everyone knows what's going to happen. 
Everyone hates each other. Everyone just wants to get the hell out of each other's company. But the court says, we got to do this one last stupid fucking thing. So we'll do it. Um, so it was a nonstop Trump uh, lies and half-truths within, under a better tone. He didn't, you know, scream and rant nearly as much as he used to. I thought Biden, when he said we had a good relationship with Hitler before he invaded, uh, in response to Trump and Kim Jong-un, was pretty good. Um, <laughs> I thought Biden finally getting around to, after a, a little bit too long, as I understand it, in the, in the weeds, talking about this isn't about my family. It's not about Trump's family. This is about your family. Which is followed by Donald Trump basically saying, well, fuck those people. <laughs> you know? Yes. Like, screw them. I, well, it's just a politician talking about political stuff. No, he's talking about we should care about what's happening to Americans. And Donald Trump just saying, giving the universal blowjob sign, say, fuck that. I'm not mm -hmm. a politician. I don't have to say this stupid shit. My idiots will vote for me no matter what I do, which is true. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But there's probably not enough idiots out there left in the, in the, in the tall grass for him to get reelected. Everyone knew, unless Joe Biden just self-destructed, mm -hmm. it was going to be pretty much status quo. You know, it'll, it'll happen. It'll be over. And that'll be that. So mm -hmm. Trump got his wall. It's a big plexiglass thing between him and Biden. And that was it. End of story. Yeah, so now that was the wall. That's mm -hmm. the wall. I, a couple other comments. One is you mentioned the, the marriage counseling thing. It's also the marriage counseling thing where you realize the husband is an abusive asshole. Right. Everyone realizes, and you yeah. have it's court mandated because everybody has to go through this. But uh -huh. Donald Trump's lying is actually a form of abuse. If you haven't heard that from me before, hear it now. Uh, and women see it. Uh, it, it when when a man lies to you all the time just because he can and he enjoys it, uh, and then gaslights you and says, "Well, you're just crazy for not believing what I'm telling you." Uh, that is emotional abuse. Threatening your health care over and over again is emotional abuse. Mm -hmm. And the sooner we get this monster out of office, the better. Uh, and then and then the other thing is I, I loved what a uh, columnist over at New York Magazine said this morning. He called uh, – he mentioned – the Fox News cinematic universe. Yeah, yeah <laughs> which that was very good. I really thought was clever. Mm -hmm. uh, and that Donald Trump lives in the Fox News cinematic universe. That's all he watches. That's all he uh, absorbs. And he points out, as I have, that in 2016, that really helped him connect with Republican base voters in the primaries. It's the reason that Donald Trump got more Republican primary votes than any other candidate in history. Yeah is because he watches Fox all the time, and that is the world in which those voters swim. Yes. So when Donald Trump opened his mouth and repeated what Hannity said last night, all of these MAGA-type voters said, oh my gosh, he's saying what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. And it's all just coming out of, whether it was at that time Roger Ailes, uh, you know, what remained of Roger Ailes' life, uh, that doesn't work. And this is what the New York Magazine said. That doesn't work when you're trying to convert other voters to your way of thinking. No. Because you're speaking from a universe where it's a fantasy. <laughs> Iron Man flies. You know, that's a <laughs> fantasy. <laughs> uh, well, and Hunter Biden is is doing cocaine off of hookers' butts and and... The emails from hell, the computer from hell, the laptop from hell. And that is, uh, as as New York Magazine said, you know, that's been in conservative media now for weeks. The laptop from hell has been a thing. And and their armed guard at the uh, border of crazy land have spent all of their time screaming, why isn't the mainstream media covering this more? And because, well, because it's a lie. And everyone knows it's a lie. And it's a stupid lie. And it's a stupid lie, and it's an easily debunked lie. Right. In 2016, Trump had Comey helping him out. Yes, he did. He sure did. Uh, and and this is not happening this time. Well, even and, though he owns the FBI, he actually doesn't. So, and this was um, this was my beef all along with um, our never Trump friends. And I'm not going to go down that path too far. But the the reason Trump won, the reason Trump won the nomination, let's let's put it that way, mm -hmm, yeah. <clears throat> is because the playbook for how to talk to Fox News viewers and, and hate radio listeners, which is 90% of the fucking Republican Party, 
has been laying out in the open for years. Mm-hmm. You, you, mm-hmm. It's racism. It's grievances. It's guns. It's gays. It's liberals. It's mouthy women and uppity Negroes. And it's just been sitting out there. And every other Republican, it's like the joke about the, the young man who goes to the psychiatrist and says, doctor, my brother um, thinks he's a chicken. And the doctor says, well, bring him in for treatment immediately. And the brother says, well, w- but we need the eggs. Um, you know, it's <laughs> every, every one of these never Trump assholes who were, who were paid political professionals, who, were, who knew the micro-targeting, who, who l- w- listened to focus groups, who had all the data at their fingertips, damn well knew that the crazy racist assholes in their party was their party. And they've, they've been making money off of it, and their ads have been flying in that direction for years, and they're, they know who they're talking to. That's why they think they're effective now. We know these people really well. Really? Did you know them before 2016? Oh, no. We swear we had no idea they were there. Well, how did you get to be a master's in understanding Trump voters when you had no idea they were there until two minutes ago? And that's mm-hmm. my beef mm-hmm. because Donald Trump's victory in the primary is not a mystery. He mm-hmm. just started talking like Rush Limbaugh. He right. started talking like Sean Hannity and all mm-hmm. these and everyone else, you know, talked peripherally. They talked with a wink and a nod. They, 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 they used dog whistles. They used surrogates. They used Carl Rove to dri- drive the message. Mm-hmm. They used Rick Wilson mm-hmm. to drive their racist message. They didn't get their mm-hmm. hands dirty. They, were, they used Lee Atwater to drive the message. They, they pretended to be above it all because that satisfied the clique in Washington and New York in the media – who wanted to pretend these were all genteel, decent, nice people. And they never mm-hmm. were. So Trump just mm-hmm. said, oh, you, you literally left the playbook for how to talk to Republican voters in the open. I'm going to take it. I'm going to sing every verse in it as loud as I can. And he won. And everyone walked around stunned that, the, again, the Republican Party was full of Republicans. Yeah. And don't forget uh, the Blaine Catpatch tweet of do you guys follow the Frankenstein project? It's a group of doctors who produce videos making fun of the monster they created. Yeah, yeah I, I got tweet it. of the tweet of the week. That tweet was of, really good. Tweet of the year, honestly. Yeah, the yeah, Frankenstein yeah. project. That was really, really good. Yeah. It's Frankenstein. No, it's Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> they don't literally they don't want to take they don't want it. It's exactly the same. They don't want to take ownership of what mm-hmm. their previous generation did. It's just weird to watch it from the outside. Because I know the people um, that they're sort of hooked up with in the media aren't stupid enough to believe a word that comes out of Steve Schmidt's mouth. Mm-hmm. Nobody believes mm-hmm. Steve Schmidt is naive yeah. and didn't no. know this no. stuff. He's, it, he's a lot of things, but he's not stupid. What, what he is yeah. is he is friends with Nicole Wallace. Yeah. And he's friends with people at MSNBC. And no matter what he does, no matter how he blows up in public, no matter how he insults people like me and you on podcasts that no one listens to, no one's going to hold him Except accountable. You. Except me. Well, and that's and and you know what? Seven. And you know who? And you know who t- gets shit? I get shit for it. Steve Schmidt doesn't get any shit from anyone for being an asshole. Your wife gives you shit for it. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. <laughs> I what wake are up you the, doing? Why are you listening to this crap? Yeah. Well, and yeah. this week it paid a dividend. He said, jumping a little bit ahead. When? Oh no! Um, go right ahead because they stole from you. They did they, again. T- twice. Twice. <laughs> twice. Um. The professional never Trumpers keep ripping us off. And this happened back to back. And I'm, I'm going to be very clear about this. I believe that if you start to critique Republicans as Republicans, you will you will always land where liberals have been all along because there's no other, there's no other angle to critique them right, from. Right. You will always discover that they are they're fascists and you'll always discover that they're cowards. And you'll always discover they're racist. The thing is, people who've been working in that universe for decades pretending they never knew and then getting mad when you ask them about it is not the behavior of an innocent person. Well, who behavior- was the one who was the one and I know he was a Lincoln Project guy who said yeah. I didn't I didn't know cuz I didn't want to know. Oh, that was Stuart Stevens. That was once our our Stuart pal Stevens. Steve, Stuart Stevens. <laughs> who was was the most honest take on it all. I didn't I didn't yeah. see it cuz I didn't want to see it. Well, and yeah. that was the podcast he was on with Mike Murphy. Okay. Uh, his fellow Where you know, Mike Murphy stole from you? Where Mike Murphy stole from me. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it was on John Heilman's MSNBC affiliated podcast and they were interviewing and they were talking politics and stuff and stuff and stuff. And you know what the biggest concern they have is uh, Mike Murphy. I'm quoting now directly. The problem is with these Vichy Republicans. <laughs> and I agree about the cowardice. You know, it's not like we were asking them to land on Anzio beach. We were just asking them to be Republicans or what we had been. 
And this is where Mike Murphy steals from me. So the cowards are going to be back. It's going to be like Germany after the war. All of a sudden, the head of the West Berlin police, you remember him from the rallies, you know, different uniform, same guy. Now, I would not take offense at this if I hadn't written this in 2009 mm-hmm, after mm-hmm. the exodus from the Republican Party, after the Bush collapse. Yeah. Saying what you are observing, boys and girls, are a whole bunch of Nazis leaving Berlin as it burns behind them. And the only way they can survive politically is by burning their uniforms, pretending they were never there. That is chapter and verse what Mike Murphy stole from me. Well, because, and I wouldn't be shocked at all if the Lincoln Project starts some sort of burn the lifeboats movement. No, of after course not. Well, they election. already have. They already have. <laughs> the, the subtext of a bunch of this shit is, oh, my God, these people who want to pretend that everything before 2020 doesn't count. Yes. You know, these assholes. Yes. Really, because your whole career depends on pretending that everything before 2016 doesn't count. Yeah. And, and well, the, it's oh, like I said to you last night, it's the... Independent Baptist Council of 1926 versus yeah. the Independent Baptist Council of 1930. And it's die heretic, you know, the old Emo Phillips well, joke, right? And and what <laughs> they are positioning themselves to do is to sell indulgences. Yes. They're selling. Depending are, on whether you start history with 2016 or right. 2020. If you are a Republican. When all of them cash their checks right. to rebrand themselves after Bush. And you're done. There because, is no more rebranding. Those ca- those checks are no good. Because there remember is, that, folks. There is there is no raw material out of which to build a new Republican Party, except out of the old Republican Party. Yep. And so they exactly. need and, um, they need millions and millions and millions of people, plus the party apparatus, plus marketing people, plus policy people, all of whom are deeply compromised. So they're going mm-hmm. to be selling the equivalent of papal indulgences. If you get tight with us, if you back us, if you if you give us money, if you get on behind us, if you back our candidates, if you tow our party line, if you let us be the leaders, then we will absolve you because now we control the cameras. The mm-hmm. liberals gave up all their power by turning everything over to us. So now we get to decide who the bad people are and who the good people are. And all of our friends mm-hmm. like Steve Schmidt will be the good people. And the, the I wanna, second – I want to share with you, Drift Glass. Oh, go ahead. Finish up that The thought. second act of theft, second day in a row. Was this is where you and I, and this is where uh, it happened twice because it happened in the Washington Post, and then later that day, um, these uh, two of these people were on the Brian Williams show, and Brian Williams read this quote aloud and asked, right, "They're going to read, they're going to read their column to them, right?" Yes, gonna, right. right. And this is, the, and, but he only read one quote. Guess which quote it was? Um, <laughs> the so one the, they stole from Drift Glass. The one they stole from Drift Glass. <laughs> uh, the Washington, oh, from you and I, actually. Um, Mm -hmm. This was the Washington Post gave the Lincoln boys. Uh, This is Stuart Stevens, Rick Wilson, Steve Schmidt, and Reed Galen, another acre of free real estate on its op-ed page, where they can explain that, quote, if you ever wondered what side of the Edmund Pettus Bridge you would have stood on, this is your chance to choose. Now, you and I have been, have been, have done graphics, have done done photoshops of this, have done photoshops of it all over Twitter. You can't be on both sides of the Edmund Pettus Bridge. And when this happens for years <laughs> and when this happens over and over and over and over and over again, um, I'm willing to concede that these these boys are just dumber than me by four years and come up with everything <laughs> I came up with four years ago, four years later. But which begs the question, well, then how come I'm not on the panel? Oh, you're a liberal. And you might start talking about shit that happened before 2016. And that's so let's right. just steal from you and Fuck you and forget that you even exist. This yeah. is the, this is the thing that cracked me up about David Brooks this week, which I won't dwell on. David Brooks said Democrats won the uh, the idea wars. Call him today. <laughs> David Brooks, the, the headline is that Democrats have won the war of ideas, which is why Diggy Parton and Tom Hartman are booked on every single cable panel. And no. you can't find Michael Steele or Steve Schmidt anywhere. <laughs> They're just invisible. They've, they've been canceled. Or David Brooks. You or can't, David, David Brooks. Brooks well, they replaced David Brooks with uh, Digby yeah. tonight on PBS. Yeah, right? Every night no. on PBS, on NPR. <laughs> she's going to be opposite um, yeah, she's uh, Mark Shields. She's Times columns a week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because Democrats no. have won the war of ideas. No. Right. <laughs> Conservatives have won the war of scaring the shit out of the media. Into right. giving them everything they ask for. so And giving them half the field. And this is something that I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Um, Shock over on Twitter uh, pointed out a very good fresh air interview. Uh, Unfettered free speech is a threat to democracy, says Emily Brazelton. Brazelton, excuse me. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, she's a journalist and also a graduate of Yale Law School and a staff writer for the New York Times Magazine. Uh, she wrote about both QAnon and how uh, particularly conservative media uh, is hurting our democracy. And part of it is that there's just enough people mesmerized by their phones and computers that they believe Pizzagate. They believe that Democrats are pedophiles. Um, but part of it is this sense that uh, half the field is seeded to lies. Right. And we just, in a democracy, can't have half the field seeded to lies. People, um, we play t uh, trivia on a regular basis online. And one of the questions was about mudsling. It, one of the topics was on mudslinging last night mm -hmm. and talking about, you know, a pamphlet coming out that says so-and-so Andrew Jackson's mother was a prostitute. That right. was back in the 1800s. You know, right. a pamphlet comes mm -hmm. out. Nowadays, it's a Facebook post that has 200,000 views that's, that a critical mass of people believe that there's Democrats terrifying children. You know, I'm not going to go into the whole thing, but right. it's just it's horrible and it's graphic. It's visually uh, you can you can see it in your mind, this this conspiracy theory. And mm -hmm. it, it, for those people who are susceptible to horror stories and drama and believe that scripted reality TV is real, if you're dumb enough to think that the uh, apprentice was a real show about a real businessman making real decisions, then you're susceptible to anything. And here they're very susceptible to this very weird conspiracy theory. And constantly evolving conspiracy theory. Right. And and regardless, impervious to fact <laughs> about, oh, look, it's a guy from Citibank in New Jersey who started this whole thing. And cheese pizza has been a cover-up for child pornography on Reddit for a decade, mm -hmm. you know, and no, no, Hillary Clinton really was ordering cheese pizza for her staff. That's all she was doing. And you can't, you can't penetrate no. uh, the brains of these folks. It's, it's a mental illness. And, uh, and, well, Joe Biden is right. And when a, when a political party mm -hmm. decides flooding the zone with bullshit is the strategy forever to win right. forever. And that you right. just keep pumping out lies because the mainstream media will always seed half the field to the right, no right. matter what right. they say. Right, um, right, I, I think I, I told you once upon a time, probably on this very podcast, one of my favorite authors when I was a kid was a guy named Edward or Edgar Eager. I forget. It's Eager. And mm -hmm. he wrote children's young adult fiction. And one of my favorite and he books. he wrote Half Magic. Is that what you're going to talk about? Yes, it is. Yeah. Which is you get you have a magic charm that gives you half of what you want. And Republicans realized 40 years ago. That we can wish for anything and the media will give us half of it. Mm -hmm. And so we'll mm -hmm. just, just wish for twice as much. And it and they kept getting crazier and crazier and crazier. And the media kept saying, okay, you got half of that and half of that and half of that. Well, and that's and that is that answers a question that I've had that this morning, uh, preparing for our show. Mm -hmm. Um because there's a difference between um having your own media. Yes. Uh, you know, and, and conservatives have their own media and feeling entitled to your own media. Yeah. Do you understand the subtle difference there that yeah. Republican base voters really feel that they deserve half of everything they yes. get? They they're want, entitled, regardless of whether they are half the United States right. or not, that they deserve. Well, you've got to give us equal time. And then it turns out <laughs> any compromise that Democrats make then gives you half of what you want you wind up on the 10 yard line Always. you know and congratulations yeah <laughs> um because you're not playing fair and that's the point you're not playing fair uh but i wanted to talk for a moment about a woman named Lori who did a i think it's it's only a minute and 10 seconds uh ad for republican voters against trump which uh -huh. is a group that started up and it's sort of a you know, it's a never Trumper group, but uh, what I like about them is they are actually using voters. Yes. Regular voters to talk about their perspective. This woman, Lori, uh, in 2016, lived in Southern California, was concerned about illegal immigration. And you you 
didn't she didn't say this and I don't I think it's because she just didn't have time to say it. But you get the sense of she knew she was throwing away her vote on Trump because she was voting in California. Right. But she said, I'm, I was concerned about illegal immigration. I lived in Southern California and I thought Trump would do something about it. And so I voted for Trump. And then she goes on for the rest of her minute and, you know, time to beg her fellow Republicans to vote against this man. And mm-hmm. to, she prayed that he would be removed from office. Mm-hmm. And she prayed for America. She was praying for our veterans. She was praying for the future of this country. She was praying for our freedoms. And she was near tears by the end of her, her little speech mm-hmm. about how wrong it was that he was president of the United States and uh, got very emotional about it. Yeah. Um, it was very moving. I put it up as open thread tonight at Crooks and Liars because it really was moving to see her realize the impact of what she'd done and where we were, where we are. And mm-hmm. she couldn't believe that her Republican senators and congressmen, and she lived in uh, Wisconsin now, she's moved, and yeah. she couldn't believe that Republicans were letting this happen to her party and to her country. And it was such a you know, model for how to do this, how to make amends and how to be accepted into normal society. And if she disagrees with me on immigration, fine. Yes. We can talk about it and we can discuss what what solutions are. I can I feel like I could sit down and have a cup of coffee with her because she's in the reality based community. Right. She understands democracy is at stake, right? I, I would I would be delighted if she would run for office. Right. I mean, that's, right. That's someone that's I can That's the kind of to. Republican you used to vote for from time to time. And, and once, we would never vote for Republicans again. Once upon a time, a million zillion years ago, not top of the ticket. That was John Anderson, no. honey. But um, <laughs> Uh, there were there were good Republicans on the ticket. Yeah, in, in, there where were I good lived. Republicans and in I, Illinois. Yeah, yeah. and they, they were running for you know for for some strange little office, you know, a, um, uh-huh. a water reclamation district or something. And right. that's fine. I knew them. I knew them personally. I knew they were good at their job. And I'm like, it, this guy's not going to blow up the world. He's not going to tear right. down the water reclamation district and declare the government is evil. So, mm-hmm. all right, mm-hmm. good good on him. I'm never going to make that mistake again, mind you. Right. Right. Um, all f- from my point of view, if you have an R after your name, you are forever banned or you're banned for the next 20 years for holding public office. Sorry, yeah. ma'am. Wait yeah. 20 years and you'll have my vote. But maybe, uh, maybe it depends on how things unfold. Yes. <laughs> but no, this I and I just caution the the people that are sucked into, frankly, mm-hmm. the Lincoln Project think, of, oh, these guys are so great. They haven't atoned the way that Lori atoned. Oh. This again. This is other than there's a couple of exceptions. I will always I will always accept that Bruce Bartlett going back mm-hmm. you know 15 years. Bruce Bartlett yeah. has, has completely wiped that stuff off his, his shoes and said I'm all the way in. I'm all that's fine. I don't have any disagreement with those people mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the and one, that was Lori's point too. She said I'm voting Democrat all the way down the ticket. Yeah, because not because I'm a Democrat now. But because my Republican Party did not stand up for democracy when I counted on them to do it. And, and that, just, you know, I counted on them to get Trump out of office. I counted on them to stand up for our veterans and they didn't do it. And I, you're seeing a lot of that in the Lindsey Graham race. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, this is this Republic. There are Republicans out there that are seeing this Republican base voters. Yeah. Uh, you can have a good conversation with a Republican base voter about Citizens United. They hate it. Yeah. They don't want big, dark money deciding elections. So I think there are there is room for common ground with Repub- with some Republican base mm-hmm. voters. I'm not talking about the Trumpers, but um, the ones that are, are waking up to this and saying, look, <laughs> uh, allowing Putin to put a bounty on American soldiers is not good. And why isn't my Republican Party standing up against that? And mm-hmm. and uh, that's I am gr- I was grateful for that video. Yeah, I I, I take some heart that that those people exist. Mm-hmm. They are probably mm-hmm. you know eleven, ten, eight, seven percent of the GOP. Mm, uh, could that's be. Fine. We'll, we we will see what we will see in eleven days just how many it is. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, uh, I have in my notes here, John Meacham is a terrible historian. Um, <laughs> Because John Meacham is is the Episcopalian pastor sounding guy goes down like custard pie 
just you know, just as smooth as can be. And there's always a you just imagine him on a porch on a windy day in the Midwest with his thumbs in his suspenders going, I'm just a simple country historian. I don't know a lot about the past, but I know that Reagan was great and then a bunch of stuff happened and then uh Trump came along. And who knows what happens mm-hmm. in between? Like, really, you're a historian and that's your take on things. And this week I watched, you know, the the NBC's resident um don't worry, everything's going to be fine. Historian continue to be baffled that the Republican Party is full of Republicans. Mm-hmm. And he's just he's staring at the camera like this, like a like pleading with his eyes, going, "How can forty five? Well, because Joe pa- Scarborough is going to come over and give him a wedgie if he goes yeah. off script. Well, how you can forty five percent of people still believe in this guy? I don't understand it. And then there's some blather about Reagan, you know, like yeah, and, yeah. and the yeah. fact that he is clearly terrified. That someone somewhere might call him partisan. Well, and even, there's no mention of Fox News anywhere no, no, no. or Rush Limbaugh no, anywhere but, on, but the, he, on the Scarborough show. But yeah. he made uh, – John Meacham made a big deal of the fact this isn't partisan. I'm not saying – this isn't liberal because the mm-hmm. worst thing you could possibly be tagged as still in the mainstream media is one of those, one of those creepy liberal types. He's well, like, you'll never be allowed on television, not, Drick Lass. You I'm know not that. I'm liberal. I'm just observing the fact that the GOP is rotten to the core. Yeah. And that's a fact. And the fact that he has to qualify pointing out an obvious fact the GOP is rotten to the core with, I'm not, I swear, I swear, don't hit me, don't hit me. Mm-hmm. Make sure the check mm-hmm. clears. So I'm not partisan. I'm not a liberal. Oh, no, no. I love Ronald Reagan. It's like, what a fucking coward. What a cowardly culture infests the Beltway media. They're so terrified of being called the L word that, that rather than put Digby and Tom Hartman on, you can have a parade of people who've been wrong about the GOP carrying the liberal message as if liberals don't exist. And that's what really gets to me because I know mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. What, what I've become allergic to, in addition to shellfish over the years, <laughs> yes. are people clear lying to me like I'm an idiot. Lying to me like I'm stupid. You know, I respect a clever story. But if you look me in the eye and you're a professional Republican henchman. And you've been that way for 30 years. And you look me in the eye and say, I had no idea the Republican Party was full of Republicans because I lived in Massachusetts. I know you're lying to me. Yeah. And I, I know you're lying to me with confidence knowing that there is no consequence to you lying right. this way. And I right. do not trust people who, who, in the middle of the worst crisis imaginable, their party collapsing, uh, fascist in the White House, a pandemic and a depression – continuing to lie to protect their own little personal stake in the future. I'm not to blame. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. I was naive. And I don't trust people like that. And I don't see any reason why I should. Um, I, I'm going to say it again. Yes. It's a form of abuse. It is. It absolutely toward is. your listener. It absolutely yeah. is. Um, Let's talk about Republican witch hunts for a minute because they're back, Drift They're Glass. back. They, they never left us, Blue Gal. <laughs> they never left <laughs> us, Drift Glass. No. You had a whole thing in uh, Crooks and Liars this week, right? I did. I did a throwback Thursday, a remarkable video of Chris Hayes. So young, so baby-faced. So young. Oh, he, my gosh. Was it on a morning show he used to have? No. Mm-hmm. it He was subbing for Rachel Maddow oh, in okay. this particular clip. Okay. And... Uh, he was talking about this was before the 2010 midterm. So this really was 10 years ago. Right. Warning people that if the Republicans got either House of Congress in the 2010 midterms, which, by the way, they did. They did. Uh, that you could look forward to another Ken Starr. You could look forward to nonstop crazy subpoenas and investigations and witch hunts based on nothing. Mm-hmm. It would be 100 percent. Uh, policy-free leadership in the House of Representatives, uh-huh. that Daryl Issa was already prepping to hire new staff to issue subpoenas to the Obama White House. And just brace yourselves, because they're promising this. And Michelle Bachman, remember her? Oh, vividly. Uh, <laughs> who, who left the Congress on, under unusual circumstances. Yes. Uh, because of ethics violations yeah. out of her office. Uh but she said, oh, I think we should do nothing but investigations. Oh, yeah. You know, if we oh, take yeah. back the House, you know, that's that was her goal. And so and, and they sent this. The prompting for him doing this segment was that a group of Republican congressmen had sent a letter to the FBI 
demanding to know why there was not an investigation into the new Black Panther Party drove those, by us. Those, uh, you know, so much voter intimidation. Election fraud and the new Black Panther those, Party. Come those, on. Those four guys. Um, man. I think it was three guys and the police came over and asked them to leave and they did. Yeah, well, you know, but that's, <laughs> yeah, that's how it but starts. But after being on Fox News for seven hours straight yeah. mm-hmm. on a loop. Yeah. No, I remember. Uh, why, why aren't they stringing up Acorn? Why are they right. impeaching Obama? Why are they impeaching right. Obama? Right. Why aren't they impeaching Obama? Mm-hmm. And uh, so this week, I ran that on a throwback Thursday post mm-hmm. uh, because this week, uh, Lindsey Graham wants to investigate Act Blue. Yeah. And as I said, bring it. Bring it. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it turns out his opponent, Jamie Harrison, has just passed the $100 million mark today yeah, yeah. for small donations to get Lindsey Graham out of office. Yeah. Of all the elections uh, going on right and, now. And so today, Lindsey Graham said that Jamie Harrison is attempting to buy a Senate seat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's all he's got. Mm-hmm. And then um, House Republicans also wanted to investigate uh, Joe Biden's use of an Amtrak train. Right. Oh, God. Uh, which uh, Joe Biden's campaign paid for as a um, – they chartered it right. for money and right. paid Amtrak to allow them to use this train. And it turns out that anybody can do that. It costs a lot of money. It costs $200,000. but. Yeah. Anybody can you could have your wedding on a Amtrak train and for 200 grand, you could have your wedding party enjoy a train ride across the state of Pennsylvania if you wanted to. I mean, I'm just saying you could do that. Uh, and so it, it was uh, something that the Biden campaign paid for and something they arranged and they were able to do it. And uh, <laughs> the Biden campaign came out and said, uh, you may not know this, but, yeah, you can you can charter an Amtrak train. There is no. uh documentation out there about chartering the white house lawn yeah for a campaign well, rally or a pre- a uh, presidential political party convention mm-hmm. <laughs> yep uh oh yeah. you're supposed to forget about that part well and um as someone said every republican accusation is a confession yeah right it, it right? really is they're, they're just yeah. as and, and they're going in alphabetical order now. So start with Act Blue yeah, and then yeah, Amtrak. Blue, Amtrak, and then what? Biden. <laughs> the blue guy is next. Biden. They're going to want to investigate my <laughs> mm-hmm. my taxes, right? Uh, did I think you have it in our notes later about um, Donald Trump uh, having to not wanting to give his 2016 campaign ten million dollars? Do you have yes. that in our notes? No, I, I yeah. don't. But it's but because they're broke. As, no, as but they, this was in 2016. He was oh, broke right, right, right. also, right. and and the idea was give your campaign. Tw- Ten million dollars, and he's. I don't want to do it. And yeah. it was. It turned out it was Steve Mnuchin came up with the idea of do it as a loan to your campaign, and all these smaller dollar donations that are coming back in, you can pay yourself back with those. Remember, remember, Donald Trump wasn't going to need anybody's money. Anybody, he wasn't going to need anybody's I don't need money. Any funding. I don't need anybody's money. I, I'm a billionaire. I, I'll pay for yeah. my own stuff. I'm an incorruptible. Because I've, I've already reached maximum corruption. I mean, that's why you can't be corrupted well, any further. But. It to- I totally didn't understand why this Hollywood guy, Steve Mnuchin, was given the Treasury Department. Mm-hmm. I, it, it, now it totally makes sense. He was the one that came up with the idea of do it as a loan. And then tw- do you remember 29 days after Inauguration Day, after the, he spent 29 days on inaugural size, he, he opened the Trump 2020 campaign apparatus to raise more money for his reelection yeah. 29 days after inauguration day which yeah. is ridiculous yeah he did it because he needed the cash to keep coming in to pay himself back well the entire trump presidency the entire trump family the entire trump uh campaign is one giant money sucking scam grift grift and, yeah and yeah. thank god we are such a rich country that we have tens of millions of idiots out there with enough disposable income, just throw money at this guy forever. And forever. And forever. they've been throwing money at Fox News and, and hate radio and they've been throwing money. And they have I, when I look into how much money gets spent on stupid shit. Quibby. That, <laughs> I, and then I go, you know, maybe five dollars a week is too much to ask for Oh yeah. Five like, dollars a month a from our podcast. Yeah. And first of all, our podcast. <laughs> we are we are incredibly grateful that we have the support we do. It's a miracle. Um, yeah. And yeah. and but I do look sort of above the weeds every now and then go, wait a minute. 
those assholes? I go, oh, 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 I get it. I get it. They, they're plugged into a larger network and they have friends and it's they have Meg friends Whitman. and friends. It's Meg Whitman. It's Meg Whitman has her HP money from way back. Yeah. And, you know, she's willing to flush two they flushed two billion dollars investment uh-huh. down the toilet in one year because America needed another television streaming service. They needed they needed a mini service, yeah, uh, on your phone to watch yeah. mini videos, and and we're undertaxed in this. Rich oh. people are undertaxed in this country, Re- desperately, <laughs> desperately undertaxed. We need redistribution of wealth, mm-hmm. and we need basic minimum income. This is this that quibby thing. Sold me. Yeah. I was like, I'm done. I'm done. No, no. If There's... if if Quibi can flush two billion dollars down the toilet in a year, mm-hmm. everybody can have six hundred dollars a month. Everybody well, in this country can have six hundred dollars a month. And, that, and, there's no question. And there are worse fates than having your taxes raised. For example, and well, here's the deal, Jeff Bezos. Everybody's going to spend it back on you anyway. Right. <laughs> so, well, uh, any <laughs> this well this week, Charlie Sykes laid out some of the worst fate possibly can be um charlie sykes as you know runs the bulwark and he's yep. essentially the weekly standard that moved over online they're doing very well they're launching a private enterprise behind that a, a paywall thing that they're going to do a bunch of other mm-hmm. business they're, they got i don't know how many millions of downloads last month which is you know not surprising given the infrastructure their reach and their free yeah. advertising on msnbc well, right and, and right. the amount of money that they had given to them by investors at the outset, millions of dollars. Right. Worth. So right. so now Mr. Sykes has a column in the New York Daily News. And he used it to his credit to finally ask Republicans to ask Republicans to finally stand up to Donald Trump, which is good. That's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um but it cracked me up that the worst fate that Charlie Sykes could imagine for Republicans who finally stand up to Donald Trump is exactly how liberals have been treated all the time for decades. Mm-hmm. And I'm quoting mm-hmm. now We know that what you stand to lose from taking a stand, your phone calls and texts may go unreturned. The receptions, parties and dates on the social calendar may be outside your reach. You may be ostracized. You may lose business. Yeah, fuck you. Welcome to Liberalville. You know how many blue dots in a red state we have heard from in the course of the 11 years we've been doing this podcast, almost 11 years? Yeah. Saying, I can't put a Biden sign on my front lawn. Yep. Because everyone will leave my husband's dentist practice right, and never speak to us again Mm -hmm. and we'll go broke. It's unbelievable. Well, And And so, you know, the idea of Charlie Sykes, millionaire radio personality saying that. Yeah, morphing. You know, you're going to make us, you're going to, it's going to be a social risk to stand up to Donald Trump. Yes, we, and, and the social risk is you might not get invited to parties. Yeah, you know the right. cocktail parties that you're used to get that you're used to glad handing at. Um, it might be it might be tough for a while, but you know maybe not because they're they're all going to put on new uniforms, pretend that maybe they, not because we're all dying of COVID. That, so well, there's um, that. You know. <laughs> now on the upside, hey, you were yeah. talking. You you observed yes. a, a phenomenon on Twitch. I did. That made you I, laugh and smile and clap. Oh my gosh, Alexandria Casio Cortez playing Among Us. On Twitch was a hoot. Um, <laughs> Twitch is where we play our trivia game, yes. by the way. Yes. Uh, which is, I have to say, it's old people talking about right. <laughs> at the 1800s, you right. know, <laughs> pamphlets in the 1800s. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he, we switched over because uh, Twitter lit up that night with AOC playing this game I've never heard of before called Among Us yeah. on Twitch, which is an 8 bit uh, game yeah. of. It was pretty quick. I, it, it wasn't difficult to catch on how, how you play and what happens. It's a group game. Uh, and she her she had her little video in the bottom of the screen so you could see her playing and and watch her face as she reacted to what was happening on the game. Mm-hmm. But. And uh, she was also doing a get out the vote. Yes. And talking <laughs> about how, the importance of voting. And it was so wonderful to see in the chat column because there's a chat while you're talking i just voted for the first time it was easy it was so cool i feel great about it uh i'd never voted before and and then aoc went oh look that's great mm-hmm. <gasps> a, le- a she girl talked to me, me. Yeah, she, <laughs> she noticed me yeah. right <laughs> and, and 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 rightly so 
I mean, that, right. that's a really right. decent thing to do. And you did it. And it's great. You should get a pat on the back for yeah. doing so. And Ilhan Omar and her daughter were playing uh, among us on, in the same game mm -hmm. and uh, talking with her. And so the the gameplay was really intense. And most of the time she was talking about the game and what happens next. And that's what made me laugh and clap. She said, I can't believe this spaceship runs on fossil fuel. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank but, you. you. Know, it's, a, it's a very uh, eight bit yeah. uh, old style game, you know, yeah. it's meant meant to look old. The ones I grew uh, up and, on. And I congratulate her for crossing over into popular culture and finding people where they are and finding young people where they are and explaining to them that this is a really good idea and it'll make a difference and it'll change things. And if you care, the things you care about, if you care about climate change, if you care about uh, gun violence, if you care about food stamps, if you care about health care, the way you participate to make the world a better place, number one, is to vote. Yeah. And uh, yeah. and she made it cool. She made it. It was a very soft sell. Although, uh, although yeah. um, um, talking about fossil fuels probably lost Pennsylvania. I'm just saying. It probably <laughs> lost. And, I don't think so. And, and, the fossil fuel uh, fracking is underwater in the polling right now in Pennsylvania well, because people know how much methane is putting into their water supply. Yeah. Your, your, and your boss is they, catching fire. They switched governors. I remember my mother. You know, my mother died the year, the you know, a few days before Trump was elected. Thank God. Um, it would it would have killed her yeah. to know that Trump was president. Um, but uh, I asked her about that. I said, "Boy, Mom, this was this was 2014, I believe. Mm -hmm. They flipped their governor's office." And I said, Mom, you know, Pennsylvania, good for you. You flipped your governor's office from Republican to Democrat. And she said, we had to, Mom, Fran, we had to. Because <laughs> she likes to be nice to everybody. Right. Granny likes to be nice to everybody. Right. She said, oh, we had to. <laughs> because the Republican governor was saying, well, we're not going to tell anybody how people's water is tested. Right. Or what the results of any water testing are because we are enslaved to the fracking industry. Yeah. That's that, and, that's called DeSantising now, where you have yes, a right. catastrophe that's exactly on your it. hands, it's, and your solution yeah. is don't talk about it, and for God's sakes, don't report the numbers to the public because that's what right. Ron don't report them, Florida, and then it COVID. won't go away. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I bring up um, AOC and and uh, Pennsylvania because we've reached that time in our politics, you know, in, in the presidential race where. Um, you see Steve Kornacki being let out of the closet. I mean that yeah. you know, the, the nerd closet, not any other the kind nerd of closet. closet. Right, um, right. With his big board. And it looks like one of those um, jigsaw puzzles I used to have as a kid, which had all 50 states on it. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the one orange for Florida and corn for Iowa and so on. And he's just sort of moving him around going, well, this could happen, but that could happen. And who knows about this? And here's the margin of error. All of which is just so masturbatory. Yeah, because yeah. he has no idea what's really going to happen. Nobody has an idea what's really going to happen. There are too many variables. It looks good, but this kind of endless, you know, taking the pulse of every goddamn poll that pops up everywhere. And what happens if this and here? Well, look, look what happens if Nevada goes this way. But what happens in Minnesota? I don't care. There are mm -hmm. people who do. And that's great for them. This is this is them playing risk in the basement while on shrooms. That's great. That makes them happy. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. But there should be a special, I don't know, Quibi channel for people like that. Because the rest of us are just like completely fried anyway. And listening to people getting jacked. Off just hearing hearing the possibility of Trump pulling this right. out. And uh, it, it's nothing. It stresses but, me out beyond yes. belief. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. and it isn't real. This is really, yeah, is, and it this isn't is, real. This is Schrodinger's electoral cat. Right, there are a million right. possible outcomes in a box. The box will be open sometime during November. Not quite sure when, not quite sure what, what happens, but eventually we will know. Until then, everything is a foam of possible outcomes. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. sitting there going through each one going, but but you know what could happen is in Pennsylvania, people might get mad. But then in Florida. Now, in a normal in a normal election cycle, when we're trying to oust the enemy of democracy, yeah. that might be okay. Sure. But that game doesn't work this year. Well, and, and uh, in, in Chicago, Carol Marine, mm -hmm. um, uh, who is a terrific journalist and a wonderful person, um, used to get 
I swear, coked up, although she wasn't really, but like highly caffeinated. Well, she was a, she was an election nerd. She was on yeah, election yeah. night and she'd go yeah. through every little result, every water reclamation district, every alderman. Oh, my God. You see what's happening in the fourth ward? And it would yeah, re- and yeah. all the way up to the. But that was when you had results all in one day. That's yeah. when you were on the same day as an election. And what happens tonight means tomorrow everything is concluded. Yeah. None of that is true anymore. So yeah. it, the people I am comforted, Drift Glass, mm-hmm. by the fact that the number of people who voted for Trump in Texas, that number yep. of of voters, that number has already voted in Texas. Yes. As of this week. I am comforted by the fact that there are today, as of today or this week, 50 million votes have already been cast. Yeah. In that range yeah. there. It's it, it's no one's seen anything like it because we've never had to do anything like it. But I am. We've and, sent I, millions of postcards to voters. I yep. just, fin- as I just said, I just finished my 115th last night, for, in in a month. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's a lot of work, but it is it makes me feel better. Um, and one one other thing, I did get online and track my vote, which you can oh, do. Did you? Yes, absolutely. You go to the Sang- well, in my case, the Sangamon County Clerk's Office, and there's a link, and there's a link, and it says yes, your vote was delivered, and and etc., and it's done. You know, it didn't, it didn't go with a shredder. There were no challenges. Yeah. Your signature is, is as shitty as it was 20 years ago. So, <laughs> you know, we're, we're good with that. Yeah. Well, and it is the ballot that the clerk of the state mailed to you. Yes. That you mailed back. Mail back. So, I mean, there's a there's a, a line of ownership yes. of that ballot. Yes, so, yes. yeah. Uh, Barack Obama gave a speech this week. Yes, a very effective uh, speech. Very effective speech. In fact, it was so effective that uh, Trump had to order his director of national intelligence to throw together a nothing burger news conference to drive it out of the headlines. I really think that's what happened. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because uh, the you know, on nothing. At 5 o'clock, we're going to have an emergency news conference about election interference. Yeah. And that's going to drop everything off of the front page of the evening news. And... You know, you'll, your primetime news will be about this instead of about Obama. I really think that's what that was well, and, about. And the news conference was, the dear leader has everything under control. <laughs> Everything's fine. Your vote is fine. Iran is really bad. Russia might be bad, too. Uh, well, but and, then, gonna... and then the FBI director came out and said, you know, uh, your your vote is absolutely protected and you have the right to vote and no one should interfere with yeah. it. And I thought, yeah. We all know who you're talking about there, <laughs> Director Ray. Thank yeah. you very much. We also yeah. know that you're not a political appointment and then you have a job in January if he doesn't fire you. Yes. Well, um, and, and my note to myself about Obama's speech, which talked about racism and mm-hmm. Trump is a racist and, and this guy pours, you know, this guy starts fires and even, and it was a very good speech. The long well, and speech. The, the part about the chi- secret Chinese bank account. Right. And can you imagine what Fox News would say if I had had a yeah. secret Chinese bank account? Beijing you know? Berry. It would have been Beijing, Beijing Berry, Berry 24 I, hours a day. 24-7 with a siren. Right. And my note to myself, very cynically, was wouldn't it have been great if this Obama had shown up like 10 years ago? Yeah. Back when he had, yeah. you know, an elected office and a big podium yeah. And a big well, megaphone. One of these days, we're going to have a Democratic president that's Harry Truman that yes. just turns and said, the do nothing Republican Congress has got to go. Right. Um, hopefully, we won't have a Republican Congress to deal with. Let's work on that as well. Well, and, and there are fractures appearing. I, I mean, the, the We've thing got the, to speed things up oh, a little bit. I, well, I do want to mention the Wall Street Journal because the Wall Street Journal, I don't yeah. read it. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a Murdoch rag as far as I'm concerned. But they do have two separate units. They have the opinion department. And the news department, and the news department just fragged the opinion department <laughs> because uh, the odious Kimberly Strassel wrote this long venom- venomous opinion piece about Hunter Biden's laptop. And I swear to you, within like an hour of it dropping, the news division had debunked the entire thing and published yeah. it. Yep. And it really is like you know what we may we might work for a Murdoch rag, but technically. Some of us are still actually journalists. We're supposed journalists. to be independent. Right, and we're, we're, right. we're supposed to actually let the facts lead us into the story, even though we know where we want the story to go. And Kimberly Strassel is full of shit. And you know what? We're just going to use our our this grenade right here to frag her right now. And God bless them for doing that. They're not going to yeah. get my money. I'm never going to read them again. Uh, they do continue to publish Peggy Noonan. But you know what? There are fractures developing. And that's that, yeah. that is a good thing. And they use their power for good in this particular instance. Yeah. Let's give our both ciderist of the week award to Ross Duthat. Yeah. Yeah. Ross Duthat. 
in the New York Times, where he continues to have a job for no reason, who published a headline where liberal power lies and why conservatives fear creeping authoritarianism, too. And here's a quote because from Because Biden's going to overreach, you know. Right. The striking thing about the current <laughs> moment is that if you sh- if you switch back and forth between reading conservatives and liberals, you see a mirror image anxieties about authoritarianism and totalitarianism, which each side believes are developing across the partisan divide. Here's I don't believe it. I don't believe that authoritarianism and totalitarianism. I don't believe it. I see evidence of it all the time. Well, there's the thing. I, I <laughs> actually am afraid of a thing that's real and exists and is happening right now. I see Donald Trump signing an executive order eliminating the civil service. Right. <laughs> I mean, but, and what Ross that's, do that, that's not my anxiety about it. Right. I have, of course, I have anxiety about it, but it's not because I'm imagining it. Right. And, and that is <laughs> or the, believing it. That, and, and what Ross do uh, uh is afraid that liberal authoritarianism will manifest itself through Facebook. Oh, yeah. And we're going to um, see that a lot with Biden. You're going to see, oh, look, you know, liberal overreach, Democratic overreach. Well, it, this whole thing with the, with the um, Amtrak. You know, all of a sudden, this tremendous concern over using federal resources for politics. Are you fucking kidding me? Well, and Ross, do th- considering that Facebook is a private company, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that you can leave anytime you want. It's not the government doing anything. What Ross do that is really worried about is free market capitalism. <laughs> that these private companies might finally say, you know what? Enough with the Q non bullshit. Right. We're not going to let you use our platform to pump your bilge into the public space, at which point we get back to, but our whole strategy is flooding the zone with bullshit. What are we supposed to do now? But what, but free speech. And yeah. that's when it comes down to, and and this, this we have to talk about this. We All have right. to talk about the reach of Facebook and yeah. how bad it is it's that, they're, that they have zero responsibility to our democracy, mm-hmm. although they are the number one platform for discussion of our democracy within our democracy it it appears i'm on facebook because and i i need to say this to folks if you're dming me on facebook i feel terrible that i don't get back to you but i'm not on facebook right hardly at all i'm on facebook for, to promote the podcast for listeners who need to see it there right and i'm on there because springfield black lives matter organizes their rallies yes. and their activism same here on Facebook. Same here. I and promote, that's it. I promote my posts there. I put them there because they'll go up. Um, yeah. And I keep track of sort of the universe. But I go there and there are, you know, dozens and dozens of clicks and notifications yeah. and films. I, I don't pay any attention to any of them. Yeah. Because, you know, what oh, I figure and, is. And I'm secretary treasurer of the Knitting Guild, too. Well, yeah. And they do stuff on Facebook. And, you know, the, that's it. Speaking, yeah. speaking of authoritarian totalitarianism, the Knitting Guild. <laughs> there you go. The Knitting the Guild. booted <laughs> Knitting Guild. Um, yeah. When they make when they make Blue Gal secretary and treasurer, you need to watch yeah. out. Yeah. Well, there's just. Uh, you know. Let's do a news roundup. Well, we already talked about Ron DeSantis. I was fascinated today to see that even Bibi Netanyahu is slowly yeah. backing away from Donald Trump. I think we're about a month away from him in a press conference saying uh, he was always a volunteer president. Kind of, <laughs> more of a coffee boy, really. I had more nothing to do with him. Boy. Nothing to do with him whatsoever. <laughs> Uh, you know, he used to bring us coffee. We used to laugh, but he's such an idiot. We had nothing to do with him. That is that and all it, those pe- those peace uh, negotiations that BB is doing is all about arms sales. Yeah. You're not going to convince me of anything otherwise. BB is a thug, and that I'm I stick with that opinion. I I don't usually have strong opinions about foreign policy and so forth, but mm-hmm. I do not like BB. Okay, nope. Uh, Jill Lepore, who I usually like, but in the Washington. Ho- in the Washington Post, she pleaded, please don't hold a Republicans accountable again. Let history, not partisans, prosecute Trump. Yeah, people were talking about a um, Truth and Reconciliation Committee where, committee. you know, basically she goes, but that's what happens after, you know, like a civil war. Like, yeah, that's exactly yeah. what we've been through. And we need a mechanism by which we hold people accountable. And she, her answer was, let history decide. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to let the SDNY decide on his tax fraud. Well, and uh, I think we need to find out about the money laundering in his campaign and do a whole lot of reform bills for the first two months of the Democratic Senate uh, to change this so it never happens again. And and we let history (laughs) we let let history take care of the Bush administration. 
Remember? Yeah, see how and, that worked out? And they yeah. all regrouped, and half of them are are now members of the mainstream press. So, no, we're not going to do that this time. If yeah. I have anything yeah. to say about it, of course I don't, but if I did, I would. Um, if you think the Pope is too liberal, because <laughs> this week he said consenting adults should be able to marry who they want, they, yeah. that he's for civil unions, uh-huh. wait till you meet Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Sorry, you're at the wrong door. You got to go around the other door. Um, U.S. coronavirus cases are surging, as if you didn't know that already. So mask up, people. The CDC says it's seeing a distressing trend in U.S. coronavirus outbreaks. As COVID cases grow in all parts of the country, the U.S. is reporting roughly 60,000 new COVID-19 cases daily, up nearly 17 percent compared with a week ago. It's bad. It's terrifying. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse when things get cold. All things I'm sure every listener knows, but... Spread the word, don't spread the virus, and look look daggers at people who don't go out in public with a mask. The Trump administration lost track of the parents of 545 migrant children who were separated from their parents at the U.S. border. Yeah. Joe Biden is right. That's criminal. That's, it's a, that is a crime against humanity, and someone mm-hmm. should go to prison for it's that. It's genocide. Forever. It is. Is what it is. Yeah. It is. And it's quite deliberate, and Stephen Miller is sitting in his little nest in the White House smirking about it. Those people need to pay, and driving them from office is not nearly sufficient. No, but, and letting history judge them is ni- no. is nil. No. Hey, guess who maintains a bank account in China, Blue Gal? <laughs> <laughs> and has paid $188,561 in taxes. To while, China. To China. To China. Uh, while pursuing licensing deals with China from 2013 to 2015, Trump has repeatedly accused Biden of being weak on China. Describing Biden's family as selling out our country to China. Again, every Republican accusation is a confession. Despite more than 50 former senior intelligence officials saying that the Hunter Biden story has all the classic earmarks of a Russian information operation, Trump has ordered Attorney General William Barr to act fast and appoint a special prosecutor before Election Day. Hurry up. Yeah. Now, you have to keep in mind for this next one, the Trump campaign and committees and the RNC have raised collectively $1.5 billion since the start of 2019. With a B. With a B. As of now, the Trump re-election campaign committee has ended the month of September with $63 million in the bank. While Biden has reported $177.3 million for the final stretch of the campaign. Biden and Democratic allies are on pace to spend $142 million on TV ads in the closing days of the campaign, while Trump campaign has been canceling ads in Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Ohio to put their last of their cash into Florida. <laughs> and uh, money is speech, folks. And yeah. As my colleague Carolee says, Democrats are screaming. With Mel Brooks' endorsement, Biden has effectively locked up the nonagenarian Jewish comedian vote. Excellent. <laughs> Way to go. Way to he go. said, I'm going to vote for Biden. Now, go away now. now go Goodbye. away. Go away. <laughs> uh, this is what we talked about a little bit earlier. Donald Trump's latest executive order would let him cripple a future Biden administration. The order would shift employees from a, quote, competitive service, which covers most of the 2.1 million executive branch employees, into the, quote, accepted service, which generally applies to political appointees. This was true when I worked for the city of Chicago. This would allow him to fire thousands of government experts like Dr. Anthony Fauci on his way out the door, leaving behind nothing but a cohort of loyal saboteurs. Republicans on the Senate Judiciary Committee advanced the nomination of Judge Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court in a 12 to nothing vote. Democrats boycotted the proceeding in protest of what they viewed as an illegitimate confirmation process as it is. Yes. Um, And finally, in national news, although there's a bunch more and you all know it, uh, Trump is furious that FBI Director Christopher Wray won't announce an investigation to Joe and Hunter Biden and has repeatedly discussed firing Wray after the election. Good luck with that. Uh, In local news, well, this is local to us. It's in Chicago, actually. Uh, There are new coronavirus restrictions that go into effect today uh, for two weeks as the nation's third largest city fights the COVID infection Mayor Lori Lightfoot on Thursday announced a 10 p.m. curfew for all non-essential businesses and ordered bars and breweries without food licenses to shut down indoor service. Another thing I wanted to point out about local news in the state of Illinois. Yeah. Uh, Rebuild Illinois. Governor Pritzker 
has uh, con- they have completed construction of I two fifty five, which is a Metro East. Uh, by completing it early, they save fourteen million dollars. They finished the road one month ahead of schedule. Uh, And they finished it in one construction season instead of four. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, they just have, because we have a Democratic governor and a Democratic legislature, and yes, I know there is room for corruption and all of that, and Mm -hmm. corruption does occur. But because Democrats know how to govern, we have an infrastructure week 52 weeks a year here in Illinois. We really really do. There's a a high-speed rail going in. Six blocks, mm-hmm. no, uh, a mile from our house. Let's say a mile mm-hmm. from our house. Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. an improvement of an ex- existing rail line, and it's been going right along, and it's been mm-hmm. on schedule um, and done really well, as far as I can tell. The thing is that Republicans in the state house voted for this because they needed roads and bridges fixed in their districts. Everyone does. Uh, everyone does, and so Governor Pritzker has celebrated the bipartisan nature of the Capitol bill that passed. Uh, this particular Highway 255 saw $67 million worth of drainage upgrades, bridge repairs, and resurfacing. They got the project done in record time, months instead of years, saving taxpayer money and protecting drivers and workers alike. I'm reading his tweet. Uh, strategically closing the road for work as the work proceeded. Um COVID-19 has changed life for all of us, but even in a pandemic, we must invest in our transportation systems to create jobs. Hello? Mm-hmm. Uh, and and it is infrastructure week, 52 weeks out of the year, because Democrats know how to govern. That is what is happening. Well, you know, uh, you remember that during the Civil War, they kept working on the Capitol building. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, it's the, the rest of the country doesn't stop during disasters. Right. Resources have to be diverted. You know, nobody was wearing nylons during World War II. Right, um, and right. you had paper drives and steel drives and, and food drives. But the nation continues because the nation continues. And you have to keep pouring money back into the basic infrastructure of American life to make sure you have a future to get to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We love you guys. Please take care of yourselves. I know it's hard right now. Uh, it's the next 11 days are going to be oh. deep in the muck. Oh. Uh, turn it off when you can. Mm-hmm. Deep breaths. Uh, listen to good music. Yep. Read a novel. <laughs> it's okay to take a break from it and read a novel as long as you voted already. Right. Uh, hopefully you're able to vote early and you voted already. We hope you have. Uh, make a plan to vote and vote. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Blaze. Blaze is a seven-year-old tabby. He likes bird watching, getting underfoot. Drift Class knows nothing about oh, that. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> One day we'll do a whole podcast on Bosco and how Bosco tries to murder me every day. Bosco tries to trip Drift Class, in particular Drift Class. I don't yes. know why yes. he thinks you're the one to just... Well, run over your ankles every time. If, if, but... he, if he brings me down, the whole house goes down. Then it's his. Oh, I so, see. <laughs> you know, I, I am the Marshall Dillon of the house. So Honestly, yeah. the tall one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Blaze also likes playing with his squeaky mouse and looking at stupid people, meaning yeah. his owners. People. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Blaze is as orange as his name would indicate. And I have to say, he's one of the fluffiest kitties we've ever had as Internet Kitty of the Week. Oh, my gosh. Go visit Blaze. And, of course, Blaze eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Blaze at our Facebook page or website. You can send your Internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com where you can write to both of us, feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag save the post office. Uh, Go to our website, proleftpod.com. That's where you can find all of the address information for our letter show next week. Mm -hmm. If you want to write us a, a U.S. mail letter, 
our address is there. It's also at the very beginning of this podcast. Mm -hmm. And our email address is there. So if you're driving or walking or you know, walking your dog while you're listening to this podcast and can't write it down. It's all at proleftpod.com. And you can just Google Professional Left Podcast and find that website. So, yeah. you know, just I, I know some people are not listening in front of a desk or whatever. Um, you can get that information. And we really mean it when we say we love hearing from you. We talk about your letters. We uh, enjoy reading what you have to say. And we're really looking forward to next week's letters show. Yeah. Uh, I want to end the show also with something that came up on my um, Facebook page uh, uh -oh. because I had posted it uh -oh. because I had posted it four years ago oh. um, and it is a prayer. And I know I've read it on the podcast before, but it seems uh, very timely. It is a Franciscan benediction from the internet. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it's, you know, who knows when this was written, but uh, I like it. And so I'd like to share it with you. May God bless you with discomfort about easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed with those who suffer from pain, rejection, and starvation so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. Amen. Amen. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. And we thank the folks that have done buy me a coffee this week mm -hmm. uh that money comes to us fairly quickly uh but any way you want to donate to the podcast we really appreciate it this is not charity this is our job and it's a labor of love approximately one percent of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution and you can too see our website proleftpod.com for details we have our paypal and postal address information go fund me buy me a coffee all of it is there at proleftpod.com Please share our show on social media. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties feel they would make excellent undecided voter focus group participants. <laughs> I don't think they're undecided, though. <laughs> no, well, they, they don't care. They, just, <laughs> they don't they just care. Look, they look at all of humanity with great disappointment. Just, you right, know, they're very terribly disappointed. And this is, this is my sofa over here, yeah, by the yeah, way, they, right? <laughs> to all of us, to them, are just like equally disappointing, <laughs> except for you know middle child who who does. Oh, rate. she's the goddess! She, oh my goodness, she she raises higher in their eyes. Everyone else is just really kind of like, really, do you have to be on my planet? Is this necessary? I okay, just shut up and open a can and go away. <laughs> hey, keep the faith, folks. We love yeah, you. Love you. Bye. Love you, drift glass. Bye. Love bye. you too, darling. Bye. Bye bye. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020. DGBG Productions. <laughs>